Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a minute, and um, I'm excited to introduce and welcome everyone to this webinar. And um, to kick things off, we have our CEO from the CDE Foundation, Jessica Howard. Thanks so much, Glenn, and welcome everyone. Uh, we know you're hungry for some lunch bites when it comes to digital lesson planning, and we're so glad that you're joining us today for our kickoff. Um, there's so much we can cover in a short amount of time, so I'm gonna make this brief. But I just wanna say two thank yous. One is to thank you all for joining us, as I know your days are constantly changing every moment. Um, we know that whatever we can do uh, is something that makes us feel better, like we're leaning in and trying to help out. Um, and we just appreciate that you are all exemplifying that by joining us today. The other is I wanna thank the amazing team at the CD Foundation who you're gonna hear from in a moment. This has been such an energizing opportunity for us to think really creatively about how to work with you and support you. This is one of many things we're looking to do with you. So we'll be so glad to hear any feedback you have. Um, and in the meantime, we've got a lot of really, really great stuff to share with you. Um, you may know us from the California STEAM Symposium, which we co-host with the California Department of Education and the California Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. You may not know the CDE Foundation at all, but I want you to know that one of our, our hallmarks that you'll see today is how much we love thinking and hearing from you about what you need and being creative about connecting you to resources, helping curate all the noise into some signals that are really helpful to you. So again, thank you so much for joining us. I'm gonna hand it back over to Glennon and Karen on our team. Thank Allison for helping us with the chat box and say, let's go. Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, again, we're really excited to kick this off. And um, I just wanna say a couple of quick things uh, in terms of our goals with launching into this new experience with all of you. Um, you know, Our first goal is really to connect as a community and support each other in our STEAM community. And, um, sorry, we got, Karen, are you sharing your screen? Is that you? Um, looks like somebody- uh, No. <clears throat> no, like I'm not somebody sure. Okay, I will, sorry for the interruption here. I'm gonna share my screen then and see if I can, uh, we're having a little bit of a technical glitch here. Margaret like Davenport, can you stop sharing your screen? I got it. Sorry about We're that. We're all learning together, aren't we? <laughs> we are learning together. And that is one of our goals, is to learn together in this new new world that we're in. Um, we also want to share out ideas and actionable resources and highlight the great work of educators uh, that are out there supporting all of our students across the state. Um, and real quickly, a couple of just meeting norms and logistics. Um, we love to see everyone on video. Uh, if you have any questions or any concerns or anything that comes up, ideas, um, please submit them via the chat. And um, uh, make sure you're muted, that's the other thing. We're gonna do all, all questions that come up, please submit via the chat. Um, and we're gonna get started. So I'm gonna pass it off to Karen, who's gonna guide us through uh, a wonderful experience here. Um, I'm really grateful that I get to be a part of this. Um, I'm on day eight of my self-quarantine after being um, exposed uh, to the virus. And I have to tell you, I, as Glennon and Jessica were speaking, I was flipping through looking at all of your faces and who knew that I would have a chance to have so many hundreds of people uh, be here in my home with me. And it's emotional. Um, I think as we are seeing each other's faces, seeing colleagues, if there's emotion in this. And uh, I'm just really humbled that I get to uh, share some ideas with you because I really, uh, as a former classroom teacher, I know what it can feel like to have so many resources and something, well, this is unprecedented, the change, but I'm hoping um, to, that I can deliver to you in the next uh, half hour um, some things that I think you would expect from me. Um, one, it's, this is gonna be an inclusive gathering. So um, if you're a kindergarten teacher, uh, welcome all the way up to maybe you're a high school STEAM coach, welcome. Uh, I looked at your faces and I know that we all are, have different roles and I'm hoping to give you something uh, through a quick demo and some frank conversation and we can certainly collaborate some in this time 
Um, I'm hoping you'll have some takeaways and some links to some templates that uh, you can take the resources that you love and you can um, build a uh, lesson uh, that can be really meaningful for your students. Karen, can you expand your screen so it's the full window so that people can see it a little easier? Yes, sorry about that. Uh, thank you so much. Is that, uh, does that seem better? That's a little better, yeah. Okay. Probably right. a presentation mode if possible. Okay. Um, we're gonna be clicking through some different documents and different tabs, so we can't necessarily go into present mode, but we'll make the screen, she can make it as big as possible uh, as we go through the tabs. Okay, I'll do that. And uh, thank you for that, Glennon. It, it's uh, nice to have a, another set of eyes. So um, what I would like to spend a little time now is getting to a uh, digital lesson that uh, we created and we think that can be um, something to, for us to start, a place to start. So this um, was a, is a digital lesson called a hyperdoc. And what a hyperdoc really is, is a way for you to present for students um, a structure for different lesson, uh, for different elements of a lesson. And so there's actually, as I go through these, there will be seven different areas. And so I'm gonna do just a few minutes of showing you what each area um, contains, and then we'll get into a little bit behind the curtain of why did I, what was my intention for what I did, and what was I thinking, and how did this all start? And so um, if you'll permit me a few minutes uh, just to give you an overview, high level, and then we'll uh, do a little deeper dive together. So this is um, based on um, this little footnote here is showing you it's based on some seventh grade standards. So my um, intention is to build something that as, as a seventh grade teacher, I could send out um, as, for a digital lesson. And the first part is engaging because I really wanna get some kind of hook. And this also could provide a place to really access that background knowledge. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, um, in this instance, it was thinking about shadow and shade. And so I'm giving students a choice here of, of reading or listening to an article, and then they are to watch the embedded video that's in that so that they can um, start thinking about what they already know about the words shade and shadow. And so what I've done for the students here, rather than giving them a URL that they need to type in, I gave them the link and that way they're going exactly where I'd like them to go to, um, the exact place I'd like them to go to. And so this is, um, as with any Wonderopolis article, um, they can choose to listen to it, they'd click here and it would be read to them, or they can read for themselves. Um, if they're having trouble with any of the vocabulary here, uh, which we call Wonder Words in this, um, website, they can get some supports in that as well. So I asked them to read or listen to the article, and then I said I wanted them to um, watch a video, and the, every Wonderopolis article has a video, so they don't have to go somewhere else. It's embedded in with the article, and then they could, you know, listen to this video, and I won't take the time for us to look at it, but just so you know, this is, um, a, it has to do with um, a sombrero factory. So it's not giving them a lot of information about sombreros, but it's something to get them wondering. And then in this lesson, I'm having them uh, think about with a teammate. So in, uh, my, for this lesson, they could call a teammate. So they're seventh graders. They may have access to phones. They could, um, Maybe they have Google Hangouts. Um, maybe they are using Zoom, something like we're using. Um, so I am putting generally here, connect with a teammate and now talk about the difference between shade and shadow and what that means. And I'm just gonna it? jump in here. Um, two things. One, I just wanna, for those that are just listening, um, this HyperDoc is a template. It has different sections and different areas of work for the students to go through. 
And two, um, I've seen a question about how do we work with um, students that don't necessarily have access to a smartphone or a laptop. And what our hope is, is that this is a template to start from, but people could build out and convert this template into a paper packet or some other way of um, working with folks that don't have access to a phone or, or a computer. Um, we recognize that this is a starting point and um, hope that this is a useful tool to build from. Thank you for that. So after the students have engaged, um, then there's some time to explore. And so this is where they'll be making predictions and going outside and whether that's out on their porch, out on a sidewalk, um, opening a window, depending on where they live, but to be able to hopefully get outside and be able to feel some different surfaces and notice uh, what does it feel like to touch something in the shade and touch something in the sun. And you'll notice as we go through this lesson flow, although it is a digital lesson, about 75% of it happens offline. So we're delivering it digitally with this hyperdoc or digital lesson. But this does not mean that for every minute that we've accounted for here that they're on a device. Um, most of it is off of the device. So um, here's where I'm asking uh, in this explore what I'm wanting them to go out and notice and then I'm giving them something to do so they can come back and talk with a teammate. It may be that you want to do this individually um, as an individual, but they're going to chart it quick sketch list. I want to give some choices here um, and then if uh, they will have some information to refer back to for when they want to connect in with their teammate. Maybe the teammates when somebody they live with in their home. Um, and then we get to the explain part where I'm going back over some things we've talked already about during the school year. Um, but now basing it on what they know, I'm wanting them to look at what's happening uh, for these seventh graders, what's happening at the molecular level to affect a temperature change and asking them to take these factors of things they know, things that they've been wondering about during this lesson flow, and now I'm wanting them to really think about, um, you know, what does it mean that humans need protection from the sun? Because ultimately we're gonna be asking them to build something that can protect a human from the sun. Uh, this is where you get into the application. They're going to apply it. And so I'm giving some constraints here because they're going to be designing and then building a structure. Um, and so I'm telling them what materials, uh, how big it can be, and um, just constraints. So anything you're having, uh, trying to make a hands-on experience in the virtual world. So this is a challenge, and so this is a way that I'm addressing it um, for this uh, group of students. And then if they have access to a phone, they could take a photo um, of their design. Maybe they've sketched it out, um, and then also um, of what their build was. And then depending on how um, we want them to share it. It is important to have that share feature because we can create things, but we know how important it is just us being here together to be able to share is an authentic uh, experience. And so we want to give them a chance for that. And so I have a way for them to share out to the whole group. Um, I'm going to click here just to show you uh, an idea um, for how they could share. So what I created here was a Google slide deck and each team would have to Wikipedia, a slide is a I'm sorry, I just said the word Google and my Google just tried to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, this slide deck, I've given them a sample and then each team member, you'll notice at the bottom here, each team or it could be individual. They could type their name and maybe, you know, this is Carlos. And then there's Karen and Glennon and Jessica, but it gives us a place to each put um, what we've named our structure and any photos. We could do drawings. If we uh, don't have a photo, we could use um, the feature here to go in and draw um, what we uh, had imagined and built. 
And what this provides for us is a way not only to collect it as the instructor so we can see evidence of their learning in one place that's easy for us. We could use Google Classroom to collect that. Uh, the reason I like this is because the students, I could assign them to once they've put their own um, information in, they could use the comment feature and go in and comment on other people's structures, maybe say two positive things and one wondering. And it gives them a chance to do a virtual gallery walk of other people's work and provide some feedback. And then the extension to this activity could be go back and read what people said about your structure and how can you improve it now and have that um, reiterative process that um, could really strengthen what they're thinking about. Um, so that's the share. And then I have a, a reflection piece, um, some time to reflect, and maybe you have a journal for them to do that. Um, there's different ways to reflect, but I wanted to be sure to have that piece in here for them. And then there's extensions um, that they could go into. Here's an article. So, you know, this lesson flow does not have to happen all in one day. Um, and for those who maybe get through it a little quicker, um, here's some things that are extensions to that, or if they continue to wonder, then you can help fulfill that as well. Karen, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I think this is a great overview, and we've had a bunch of questions roll in. We have about 10 minutes or so in which we're gonna go through some questions. Um, I think what, you know, and maybe can you, um, pull your window all the way to the top of your screen. I've had a couple people ask for that. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. I, I, I have oh, these good. controls at the top for okay. um, no Zoom. And so I'm sorry, I'm just learning on that. So thank you. No problem. Um, so let's pull back the curtain. What was the genesis of this project? And, um, and how did we get to this template and so forth. And so I'll answer the first part, the genesis of this project. We, uh, as the CDE Foundation, work with a lot of statewide partners and we're challenged to develop a, uh, a hands-on learning experience in a virtual environment. And so um, this was the impetus for this. And we actually started with a kinder lesson plan mm -hmm. uh, that we uh, found on makered.com as a starting point. And then Karen took this and adapted it uh, and added a lot to that lesson plan. Um, and then I'm curious as to why you selected Wonderopolis. You talked a little bit about it, but I think there's some really mm -hmm. key reasons that you selected Wonderopolis. Right. Um, and I've used uh, Wonderopolis with a lot of different uh, grade levels. Um, but one of the reasons I chose this one is I know that students, one, don't have to have an account. So it's when you notice when I clicked in, I didn't have to log in. And so sometimes the logging in process uh, can be difficult for kids, uh, depending on their skills. And so I want to remove as many barriers as I can. So I chose it for that. Um, it's free, so it's available to everyone. Um, so I like that. I like this listen feature. I have students who, let's say I have seventh graders who, um, aren't reading at the seventh grade level. Um, and if this article is uh, difficult for them to access, they can listen. Um, you, typically what I would do is say, listen, then try to read it, then maybe listen again if you need to. Um, and so I like, I like that feature in it as well. And then as you go in, I think these supports are really important um, to help them with understanding some of the vocabulary words. And it goes into even, you know, where does the word um, shade come from? Um, and that it there is a Spanish cognate with, um, I think it's sombra. And so I like that it pulls in uh, from my ELLs. Um, I can make, help them make some connections here to things they may already know so that they can jump quicker into the um, lesson that we have. So those are some of the things that I love about it. As I go forward, I chose the one article but I could have said, choose any article in Wonderopolis and uh, that has to do with shade, let's say. And then there are about 2,500 articles in Wonderopolis, and so they could have chosen their own. I chose this one because I had a specific thing I wanted them to think about, 
but they could be looking at, a, you know, shade from a different point of view, and that would be really interesting too, and it would be a way to give choice. So it just depends on what your intention is. Karen, the question was asked from the audience. Um, are you able to print out these uh, lessons from Wonderopolis? Do you know? Uh, let me see. I believe that there's a, you can print just the article piece. It won't be, um, you know, because there are so many visuals and things. I don't think you get these, but there's a print feature here. So let, uh, let me see uh, how it looks. So this is what you would get. Of course, you wouldn't get the videos, but you would uh, get the wonder words. So you could have them, you know, write a poem using some of the wonder words. And every Wonderopolis article also has try it out where they have something you can do at home and they take into consideration that, um, you know, there's not a lot of resources sometimes in the home. So it's something that's usually interacting with another family member. Uh, to wonder things. So um, that's what printing would look like. And a One. quick question about grades. Sorry, Glenn and I. Go ahead. Um, uh, there was a question about would these work, are there versions for eighth graders and um, what sort of, I would enlarge it to say what grade spans is Wonderopolis good for? Right. You know, or best so suited for? I've used this K through eight. Um, I have heard of people using it as well in high school. So for K, of course, they can't read it, but they can listen to it. It could be read to them. Um, it, the articles tend, when I've looked at Lexile levels of, with the ones I've looked at, they tend to be like fourth to sixth grade. Um, and so what I would suggest is, um, this isn't like um, Newzella, where you can click on it and change the Lexile level on the fly. It's not that sophisticated of a tool, which is probably also why it's free, <laughs> um, because that takes a lot of work and engineering on the background. But for an engagement thing, I think that it really it can really work, um, no matter what the grade level. I actually um, read these each night. I have a now eighth grader, and we've been doing it for years. He just finds it interesting, and he could read it, but he just likes to talk about it with me. And so I think. Um, I know adults who read these, so I think it can work for anybody, Just, um, but they do not change on the fly. Karen, one of the things that we wrestled with as a challenge um, in the hands-on design component of it was mm -hmm. materials and whether or not to collect a design in advance. Can you talk a little bit about how you thought about what materials people would readily have and um, Got it. things on, on that front? So um, this gets to the, when you're asking kids to um, go offline and create things, um, I was trying to think, well, what would most households have? And so, um, you know, wanting people to be able to, you know, the point of this isn't so much the materials, it's that they get to take an idea that's in their head and make it physical. And so tinfoil, tape, cardboard, coins, and then I just said item of your choice because I thought then they let them get creative or you could even just say limit it to four items, whatever you have handle, you know, available that, um, you know, it costs less than a dollar or something. You could set up your own limitations, but for sure I didn't want to be saying something here that I, you know, would be a barrier to someone to be able to do what I need them to do. And then on the design front, this is an option for educators as to whether to collect the design before the students start a build um, and how, how educators collect those designs. We thought about um, students could draw it on a piece of paper and take a picture. We also mm -hmm. thought about students could use Google Slides and the shapes to build a design in a slide as a, mm -hmm. as a rough draft before they tried to build it. Um, mm -hmm. So this was, again, another way to potentially collect the evidence uh, and share that out with the whole class in, in a slide deck. Right. And, you know, I mean, students are all over the place and what interests them and what skills they may have. And they don't have to be skills that we've necessarily taught them in the classroom. So if you have students who like to, um, you know, use something like Scratch Junior, or they've been doing code.org and they know a little bit about one of those tools. Code.org still has a lot of um, 
uh, free tools online that are for drawing. And so you could just open it up to them and say, I'd like to see what your design looks like. Be as creative as you can be and, and show me what you can do. And you could give them some options, but I wouldn't necessarily limit it because they may know something we don't know that's something that's a hobby of theirs or that they're just interested in trying to learn uh, during this time when they're not in the classroom. So we can support it that way too. Great. So um, we have two to three minutes left. I'm going to drop our feedback survey into the chat. Um, Karen, can you maybe go back to the slide deck and just kind of walk people through and show them where all the resources that you've curated are for them? Uh, yes. And then for everyone, Next. we're going to stick around uh, on the call after 1130, but we want to end promptly at 1130. Um, for anyone that has to move on to the next thing in their day and have lunch mm -hmm. or, or whatever it may be. But we'll stick around for a few extra minutes um, to answer some more questions via the chat if uh, people are interested. And I wanted to make it easy for people to get to the resources. So if you're in this document already, at the bottom you'll see I have the standards I base this on because when I start with lesson planning, I do always first start with the standards and then decide, okay, how am I going to be able to um, get the kids to where um, I know they need to be. Um, there's HyperDoc templates here. So this is just, you could use this and cut and paste, make a copy, put it on your own Google Drive and um, use this however you like. Um, or you, I also have templates. Um, there's uh, the original lesson plan that was for kindergarten that we used. And then Yesterday, Linda Darling Hammond and the Learning Policy Institute came up with some curated resources. So I, you probably have access other places, but I'm trying to make it as easy as I can for you. But if you go to this HyperDocs template, um, you'll see things that you can just copy that are freely available um, that educators have shared out. Um, so you can go there. If you're in the original slide deck, oh, sorry, I went to the wrong one. Uh, the original slide deck that we started from, um, there are resources, templates, again, the same, these are the same things. I just didn't uh, know where you would want to go, so I've got it in both places. Um, slide four of our original slide deck has the HyperDoc templates. So there are resources here um, that you can uh, get to, uh, however works best for you. And again, just before we conclude, really want to thank everyone for jumping in and joining us for this call. Um, this is uh, an exciting response for us, and we're really excited to have everyone here. Um, we are going to post the slide deck, which has links to all the resources um, at the end of this call, and uh, we'll send a wrap-up email, uh, and we'll also post a video of the call. Um, so that concludes our formal programming. But we're going to stick around again, uh, I'm, and I'll drop the link to the feedback survey. We would really, really appreciate people um, posting, uh, completing the feedback survey for us. Um, and then lastly, Karen, do you want to preview what we might have going on next week? Oh, that would be great. Um, so next week uh, on Thursday, um, we're uh, trying different times to see what works for people, but on Thursday at 11.30, so that would be March 26th, um, we have one of our partners at KQED um, that is going to be talking about um, uh, PBS Learning, uh, I mean, um, excuse me, KQED, KQED. thank you, KQED um, Learning. learning. And uh, so, and we'll be talking about uh, making and uh, hands-on things that students can do. And they've uh, got some resources to share with you. And uh, they are really wanting to um, help however they can. So as soon as I let them know we were starting this webinar series, they were first to jump up and say, we're in, let us know how we can help teachers and other um, people who are trying to help students. I just wanted to add quickly, um, first of all, thank you for all the incredible hard work done very quickly by you all on this. Um, we are just figuring out stuff alongside all of you, <laughs> but we, to whatever degree we can put any of our superpowers, like Karen's superpowers with HyperDocs to help support you, 
we will. Um, but we also need to learn from you. So that's why that feedback survey is so helpful. That's why we're going to take a look at all your questions, answer as much as possible, continue to iterate how we can help, give you both very specific snack bites or lunch bites to give you tangible examples, but also pull back that curtain and help you understand how and why we do things. Um, but we only have the few brains in our org. We need all your brains to help us moving forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Okay, so that's the conclusion. Um, and we'll give people a, check, a second to sign out and we'll stick around for any additional questions that people have. Again, continue to use the chat. Um, and I've, I've mm -hmm. tried to update the permissions to the survey um, and you may just need to refresh uh, your, your tab if, if there's a problem. Looks like the survey is working now. So we really, really appreciate your feedback and uh, hope everyone has a great lunch. Thank you for coming into my home. I appreciate it. So we'll pause for two or three minutes, and then if there are others that are still sticking around, um, we can we can open it up and answer some questions. We will be sure to give a reminder for next week. Um, so after. Uh, we conclude this, I'm sure we'll be sending out a reminder. So um, don't worry, we'll stay connected. Lynn, what kind of, uh, what kind of a Zoom account is this that you can handle so many people all at once? Um, we uh, added on uh, the large meeting feature to oh, okay, okay. which which is an, an additional charge but we added a large meeting feature on to my account to, to be able to host this many people yeah I don't think I've ever been on the zoom call with this many people <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you can imagine there's been a lot of research on our end of just what kind of tools we need to use to engage with you all and they work really well actually for having other people logged on Really yeah, cool. we're, we're really happy with it and uh, really appreciative of people uh, adhering to submitting via the chat and um, and staying muted throughout the call. Mm -hmm. I saw a few children's faces and as a former kindergarten teacher, I had to make a little uh, picture for them. So I don't know if they can see it, but I made them a little uh, <laughs> image. Aww. So uh, um, this is all of you kids who have to stay uh, be at home right now i i miss you and here's a picture for you maybe next time you can draw me a picture sweet. i just wanted um, to add that um sorry i'm raja gohatakurta i'm a professor of astronomy at uc santa cruz and our university offers faculty zoom accounts and the default accounts uh, allow for 100 connections but these large meeting licenses that the university has a limited number of allows up to a thousand connections oh good to know Thank you. I was wondering, can we just quickly again remind everyone how they're going to get resources from having joined us today? Yes. There are a few different ways, right? Correct. We're going to send a follow-up email to everyone um, with links to the slide deck and the posting of the recording on YouTube. Um, we are going to post these resources on our website and we are going to send it included in all this. We'll also be updating and sending an announcement for next Thursday's session. Thank you. And so if people are already, they, they signed up and joined us for this, it means that we have their email address and that's how we can send them reminders for next week and all of this stuff and also the survey link, right? Correct. Yep. Perfect. So um, we're happy to open up to any questions and if, if you want to take yourself off mute to ask a question, that's just fine. Um, we'll stick around for another 10 or so minutes. Hello. So, oops, sorry. Go ahead. Hi. I am so new to this, even to Zoom. So where do you think I should start the very, very beginning? I teach um, 
uh, 11th graders and seniors, and we were the last to get <laughs> Apple computers. So I'm very, very, I, for me, it's a steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. so what do you mm -hmm. recommend I do? Where do I start? You know, I think that um, the first place I would probably start is sending them just a link to something. So if you want them to read, you know, let's say that at the ex extension, um, at the end of that um, lesson flow, there was an um, article from the New York Times, you could just send them a, uh, a lesson link, I mean, an article link and just say, please read this article and then just see if everybody is able to um, access that. And then you'll know who can get to what and then you can then build, okay, well, now you know that they are hearing you digitally. So then you could start to build just very simple, just maybe one or two of those. I did seven different things with Engage and, yeah. um, and all that. I just start with like maybe three things and then build. Don't feel like you have to do all seven. Just, and then start with, just start with one thing. Okay. So uh, that would be for doing something like what you did because right now I'm just using Schoology mm -hmm. to do that. I haven't done Zoom at all. And so, so for mm -hmm. Zoom, I would just start with just one little article and see how well they're doing and how I'm doing with that. If you were going to use Zoom, like the way we all are here and you wanted your class to all come together the way we've all come together, then you would uh, just go to Zoom and you would start up the account. But instead of Glennon being the host, you would be the host. Okay. And then you would send them an email or however you uh, communicate with them and say, you know, at 1130 tomorrow, I want you to click this Zoom link and we're going to try this together. And, you know, there, out of all your students, somebody will probably have some experience with this and it doesn't have to be you. And they'll, uh, so just tell them, you know, that you are assign it, say, I want you guys to become, you know, know about Zoom etiquette and, um, you know, all the features of Zoom and we're going to come together in Zoom and you're going to teach each other and I'll learn along with you and let them teach you the lessons. Okay. Zoom so has also announced that they will give um, free accounts to schools. So, um, uh, with your with your administrators, you can check with them or those of you who are administrators. Mm -hmm. All they are requiring, it looks like, is that you do a very simple sign up and that you have a uh, school based email address. So you could um, for you and your colleagues have access to this so that it isn't just requiring each of you to sign up separately. I would just take a close look at that. Um, and either way, I think the point that Karen's making here and it's sort of a big picture is just try out something. And, right. and go from there. Give us your feedback in the survey of aspects of that you need help learning about. If mm -hmm. we need to do some more basic tutorials about some things, then we need to do that, but we won't know unless you tell us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And All I'll right. also add that um, the reason we picked the HyperDoc template is we felt mm -hmm. that that was a good platform to set some norms about how lessons might be delivered. That's a good template to use to set some structure in a virtual environment. And so we provided one lesson, but you could do numerous different learning experiences in different templates or different hyperdocs as you move along. So we just felt that that was a, a good potential starting point to provide structure uh, to the experience for the students. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Best of luck to you. Bye -bye. We're here for you. Let us know. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How do I get out? Uh, <laughs> That's a great question. No, you have to always be with us. <laughs> um, at the bottom right of the window, there should be an option in red to leave the meeting. Um, I'm not seeing anything. It just says a uh, place where I can uh, write a message. And you can also just close your window, too. Oh, just close so, my window? OK. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot and hope we can have another session in yep, the meantime we'll and use your resources that you offered. Yep. I'll try to explore those and uh, look for an article to start yep. with something small. That sounds <laughs> great. Thanks. Thanks, thanks so much. Bye-bye. Um, we've got about five more minutes. Any other burning questions? Hey, hey I, I, uh, this is Deepika from Redlands Unify. Hi, Deepika. 
Hi. I have a question for Jessica, I believe. Hey, Jessica. I don't see Jessica right now. Hold on. Okay. So I'll give you the question. You know, I'm uh, as an administrator, we are receiving uh, a lot of questions, especially with the college, AP College Board giving an update that they are not canceling the AP testing. They're continuing with it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I we, especially this morning, I was flooded with questions from teachers and parents is um, where do we stop the grade book? Do we stop or do we continue with the grade book? And how is that equitable? So I, I thought Jessica, who has some uh, resources from state, from the state superintendent office, are we as school district going to receive some guideline uh, regarding the grade book? Because if a kid has an A up till this point, he's fine closing the grade book. But if a kid has an A minus or an F, they're not fine closing the grade book because mm -hmm. they had nine weeks to pull up their grade and anything that shows up, especially for high school kids, anything that is on the transcript mm -hmm. is going to stay with them for the rest of their life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Deepika, we'll raise that up to Jessica and, and see if we can get some resources to you. Um, but let's, uh, I'm going to open it up for other questions that are a little more specific to the presentation that we just provided. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have a question they want to raise or think their thought, idea that they want to share before we close out? Uh, do you mind if I ask a question here? Please. Uh, Liam Kennedy, good to see you again, Glennon. Um, good to see you uh, as well. So I'm, I'm sort of a lurker here. I'm a, um, uh, but uh, the reason I'm on here is because I'm doing a lot of uh, seminars, Zoom meetings, um, with teachers who are looking to uh, support their own students uh, across the country during this time. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just curious to find out for all of the teachers and educators who are on here, um, if it's an appropriate question to answer in this forum. Um, I'm just curious uh, how, this, how this is actually translating into the real world of students right now. You know, that's what I've got my sights on, uh, doing lots of things with the International Space Station, along with uh, teachers and getting that out to their community. But I'm just curious, with because this has such a large number of you here, are you do? Uh, is this something that you are now actively bringing to your students um, using this medium or other mediums? Sure. Uh, so, um, <laughs> yeah. So. Um, if people want to respond via the chat, that's fine. I don't think we're going to be able to do that with as many people as we have on the call, Understood. getting a whole bunch of, of responses. Um, so I'm going to um, say we've got one room for one more question, and, and then we're going to end the call for everyone. Um, Liam, someone's asking for your contact info in the chat. So if maybe if you want to sh throw your email into the chat, that would be great. Let, One final question. I had a yeah. quick question, if that's okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I was wondering if there's, a, I heard a lot of talk about schools, but all the way from elementary to high. Mm -hmm. um, I'm particularly focused on high school students and STEM experiential learning experiences. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, online versions of those in this time of COVID-19. Um, sure. Is there uh, much emphasis on that in, in uh, future? Will there be much emphasis on that in future calls? Yes. So, I mean, I think we're trying to balance um, both uh, what resources are online, but also recognizing that experiential learning needs to happen away from a screen, too. And so we tried to emphasize that with our, our experience today. Um, but there are lots of resources out there, and depending on what your subject is or where you're where are you wanting to go with uh, an online tool? Um, you know, one of the things that we thought about, even with this example as an exercise um, for doing the design component, if you're with a program of students that are ready to do 3D design, um, you could use Tinkercad online, um, which is a, a web-based, similar to Google Docs, but it's a 3D design platform meant for 3D printing. Um, but it allows you to, 
pretty easy to learn and allows you to do a, a 3D build using shapes and um, drag and drop pretty easily. So depending on what you're doing, um, you could use that for the design component, but we also wanted to actually like say, hey, you need to step away and build something with your hands. And whether that's with your neighbor next door or that's with your mom or dad or your brother, um, here, here's what we're expecting for you to build with your hands and send that to us with a picture of your final design um, of your prototype. So um, it's, it is a bit of a, a challenge in that you have to be very flexible on the materials that you allow the students to use. So, I mean, common resources that are available in any household, tin foil, paper, tape. You can do a lot with those three materials. Um, and if additional students have other things they want to sub in or do differently, then great, let them sub in and do differently. But we wanted to emphasize the fact that it's important for students to spend, while we're doing virtual classrooms, to spend more time away from the screen doing stuff and getting the hands-on experiential learning than it is to be just sitting and getting on a screen, if that makes sense. And I would also add to that that, um, you know, in the survey, if we had, if we could get feedback on, you know, what we need more things targeted to, and maybe it's, you know, high school something or pre-K, uh, that's where, you know, we're today trying to um, recognize each of you, but, you know, to differentiate is really important as well. And so we're just trying to figure out what resources can we pull together. It might not be, it won't be just Glennon and I, we need to know within our network, who can we tap? And then also we want to be able to highlight things that are working. So it could be uh, you all would be a future webinar on, I tried this, I'm doing this, it's really working. Uh, we would hope that you would share back in this community so um, you know whether we're having just one a week or two a week what we'll find that out after we see what all of you say uh, the need is we just want to be nimble and try to be responsive and you know a week ago we had no idea we were going to be doing a webinar today we knew eventually we wanted to but this has caused us to get creative and accelerate things just the way everybody else is having to get creative and accelerate things so um, the more we can hear what you need, the better I think we can respond to it. Thanks everyone. We're gonna conclude the call. I'm gonna drop the feedback survey into the uh, chat one last time. And uh, one of the questions in the feedback survey is what topics would you like in the future? Um, so please uh, let us know and um, we look forward to your feedback. But mm -hmm. we're gonna wrap the call and sign out of here. Uh, and hope everyone has a great lunch and a good afternoon and uh, a wonderful weekend ahead. Take care. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye, everyone.